Thanks, Alan. Thrombosis is the underlying cause of the world's top three cardiovascular killers, heart attack, stroke, and venous thromboembolism, otherwise known as VTE. Although VTE is life-threatening, the condition is preventable with the right awareness and understanding. Here to tell us more, we are joined by Thrombosis Ireland founding member and thrombosis patient Anne-Marie O'Neill, along with Dr Tomás Preslin, who is also a member of VTE Ireland and a consultant in emergency medicine in the Matter Hospital here in Dublin. Good morning to you both. We are both morning. very welcome very to the welcome. programme. Uh, doctor, there is a, a line in my notes which really caught my attention, I have to say, when I read it last night. The number one cause of preventable death in hospitals is VTE. There are two words there. First of all, preventable death, mm. and second of all, that's happening in hospitals. So what is VTE? Why is it preventable, and why is it not being treated, I suppose, more seriously? Why is it something that is not more awareness of? OK, well, VTE is, is clots that develop in the legs, usually, and travel to the lungs, and that's where they, that's where they kill you. VTE kills more people than breast cancer, HIV and car accidents combined. It is the leading cause of maternal death in pregnancy and the second biggest cause of death in cancer. People in their 40s, such as myself, have a 1 in 12 lifetime risk of developing a clot. This is an important, common problem. Research in the UK shows that where you implement a national uh, policy of risk assessment and giving clot preventing medication to patients in hospitals, you can reduce deaths. Because we know that 60% of clots are related to hospital admissions. And you may say, why is that? Well, the factors that cause clots are, there's a triad of a, a problem with the flow in the blood vessel. So our heart pumps blood down to our toes, but there's no pump in our toes to bring the blood back to our heart. So it relies on flow through the veins, valves, and this and relies on motion movement of the, the muscles and movement of the legs. That's one factor. The other factor is surgery or injury to the vessel. So hip surgery, knee surgery, abdominal surgery, all causes yeah. pressure on the blood vessels, which increases the risk of clots. So this is the reason why people get clots in hospitals. There are other factors such as stroke, heart failure. Um, so being in hospital, we know you're much higher risk. And, and Marie, you uh, obviously didn't know the, the theory behind that when what happened to you happened to you, but tell us, tell us your story. How did you come to have your first clot? So I had gallstones and I went in to have my gallbladder removed and there was complications and I needed another surgery in a week. So I really was immobile and I wasn't well. And you can get dehydrated as well, which doesn't help. Um, so I got a clot to my lung, but I didn't really know what had happened to me. Um, so when I left hospital, I was put on an anticoagulation um, drug. And Were you aware at this stage that you'd had a clot? Yes, I was yeah. aware that I had a clot on my lung. But didn't I know thinking, it was called, but e what it was called. Everything that was going on, you're, you're, you're in the middle of a fairly heavy time medically with all your surgeries, so yeah. maybe it wasn't highest in your, in your thoughts. It wasn't really, and I was put on the medication for six months, and once mm. the six months was over, I was home on my own and didn't know. But I also didn't know that I was still at kind of high risk uh, for the 90 days when I got home on my own. Okay. Of now, having another clot. Of having another, another clot. clot. But yeah. I, was on, I was on medication. Mm -hmm. Not everybody would be on medication if they hadn't had a clot in hospital. Um, so I... The six months had lapsed. Yeah. The six months had lapsed. I was off the medication. Off the medication. And everything was behind you. You're feeling went pretty back to good. work. Mm. I was busy. I had two small children at home. Um, I didn't really think any more of it. And then about five years later, out of the blue, I started to have some chest pain. Um, it wasn't so bad that I couldn't go into work. So, and I was busy in work. And, and, I, and did you associate the two? Initially, I didn't. Mm. And then maybe there was a bit of a memory in the back of my mind that it might be something similar. But I did ignore it because I was busy. I didn't go straight to hospital. For how long, Anne-Marie? How long did I you have those pains, would you probably say? Probably about a week, really, oh, before word, it got yeah. to the point where I actually was struggling to breathe. So I said, OK. I'll d I, I was driving on the M50 with the two kids in the car, and I pulled over, and I said, OK, I actually can't get enough breath here. Um, so I just drove to the nearest A&E myself and was admitted immediately with another PE. And what did they look at your chart then, see your history, see the fact that there were clots in the past in your history and say, OK, this is what this is, we need to act quickly Well, it was a here. different hospital. So yeah. because I just went to the nearest one because it was an emergency at that stage. Mm. So I had to just explain what had happened to me and just start all over again. Mm. Um, and 
and to be honest, even after I, I was in hospital for a week, but even afterwards, um, I still didn't quite know how much of a risk I was yeah. at. Nobody had really had the conversation with me that time, to, even in the second to hospital. Us, to us, the, the reason that you're here today <laughs> is to, try, or to, to do, we're doing raising awareness of the fact that this is such a major killer. So you've also produced one of these uh, cards as well. Uh, what's the purpose of this? Well, we want to reduce death from clots. So how do you reduce death? Number one, you stop people from getting clots. Mm. So you make, make them aware that they need to be active to move around. Number two, for people who do get clots, they need to be aware when they get them that they need to present for, you know, medical care early. So the early diagnosis, as in all medical conditions, leads to better outcomes. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of the card is to make patients who are in hospital aware that they are at risk of developing clots and the symptoms to look out for, such as pain in your calf muscle, swelling of your leg, redness of the leg, pain in your chest, short, unexplained shortness of breath, coughing up blood, these kind of symptoms. Because the thing is, the stats would show that when you have had a blood clot, you are 30% more likely to have another one. So one in three people who have experienced what Anne-Marie experienced will get it again at some stage. Yes, exactly. So it's one in three chance if you've had a clot that you'll get a second one. So you need to be aware of the symptoms. So there's an education piece for doctors as well as for patients, you know. Uh, so we're, we're advocating that this condition should be highlighted at a national level, mm -hmm. that the, we believe there should be a national clinical program for venous thromboembolism and a national key performance indicator that that mandates that all patients who are admitted to Irish hospitals have a risk assessment done for clots and be given medication to prevent clots if it's You see, it seems indicated. just so surprising when you say it is the number one cause of preventable death in hospitals in um, is VTE, yeah. that it is not something that's sort of at the top of the checklist when you have a patient admitted for doctors, for people who are so well educated and people who are working as medical professionals. Why is that? Is it just a lack of awareness? I mean, part of it is to do with prioritisation. If you look at certain conditions like stroke, heart attack, cancer, they've been very much prioritised. There's mm. been a lot of aware awareness amongst doctors, also specialists. On the continent, they have vascular medicine specialists, which don't exist in this country. And they're, they're the people who drive the agenda for this condition there. Mm. So, Do you still live with the condition, do you feel, Anne-Marie? Is it still in your life? Is it something you're conscious of? Do you look for keep an eye out for symptoms, do you take medication? Absolutely, I'm on lifelong anticoagulation med medication. Um, and also, like initially I think I had a bit of a post-traumatic stress um, over the whole thing, but yeah. as I educated myself, as I became aware of the signs and symptoms, I knew if I took action immediately that I'd be safe, I'd be okay once I, once I got it some medical knowledge help. Is power. Knowledge, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Yeah. So once we know what to look out for and the fact that we have to take action immediately, then uh, it just, you, you relax, you're not as anxious about it. It reduces your stress, of course, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, listen, thank you very much for coming in. And thank all you very the, much for the having us. The advice, I think both myself and Kira are, you know, really quite surprised at the, at the statistics yeah, yeah. involved in this. Absolutely, from Bosis Ireland, the card is available. Where, if anybody wants it? Well, um, it's actually just been sanctioned by the HSC now, and we're hoping to Great. put it into every hospital nationwide for all patients who are admitted. Well done. Thank well you done. so much for thank joining you very much us. For your Thanks a million. Thank you.